After watching this video lecture series, students will be able to diagram formation of ionic bonds and, understanding, and understand the driving forces behind uh, the bond formation. Um, you're also going to be able to understand lattice energy um, and relate the relative values to ionic compounds and their features, uh, such as melting point and, and, and things of that sort. So an ionic bond consists of basically two differently charged atoms that are attracted through electrostatic interactions. So basically what that means is we have one thing that's positively charged and one thing that's negatively charged and they attract each other to form an ionic bond. Now this usually occurs between a metal and a nonmetal, such as let's say sodium ion okay, and a chloride ion to give us NaCl. Okay, however, um, we could also see an ionic bond form um, between a ion that is positively charged that is not a metal, okay, and a non-metal anion to give us this type of ionic compound. So, um, basically the concept is that you have a positively charged ion interacting with a negatively charged ion. Most of the time that'll be between a metal and a non-metal, however there are exceptions um, as we see here. So when we actually form an ionic compound, we need to think about what actually physically happens. Okay, So what physically happens is that we first start out with two individual neutral atoms. Okay, And the neutral atoms um, are basically going to either transfer or accept electrons depending on their specific needs. So if we go ahead and look at sodium atom here, sodium has um, one electron in its outermost shell. Okay, um, So in order to be like its nearest noble gas, um, sodium is willing to give up an electron. Um, on the opposite side of that, chlorine uh, has seven valence electrons and is in need of an extra electron in order to be like its nearest noble gas. So in order for both of them to obtain the octet that will confer stability, the sodium is going to transfer an electron to the chlorine and subsequently you're going to form a sodium cation and a chloride anion. Now, the positive and negative charges of these ions causes that electrostatic interaction. And the attraction between these two ions is what creates that ionic bond. So, as just a rehash of what we just talked about, basically what's going to happen is your atoms are going to lose or gain electrons. Um, and basically they're going to do that depending on what they need. Um, the attractive forces or those electrostatic forces that occur are going to happen because of the opposite charges of the ions that are produced. And the strength of these interactions, which is a new concept, is going to be dictated, dictated by the size of the charge. Okay, So the larger the charge on the ions, the stronger the um, electrostatic interactions. And the stronger the electrostatic interactions, the stronger the ionic bond. Another way to look at this type of bond formation is to look at it with respect to ionization energies and electron, affinity, electron affinities. So atoms that have low ionization energies, which are typically metals, um, are going to be those that want to give away electrons. And atoms with high electron affinity the ones are going to be the ones that accept those electrons from those metals. Um, so basically, we're going to be forming ionic bonds when you have an element that wants to give up an electron in order to be like its nearest noble gas and one that wants to accept it. Now, in order for it to give away electrons, it needs to have a low ionization energy. That needs to be an easy process. And elements that need to accept electrons or, or want electrons in order to have their octet need to have a high electron affinities in order to facilitate that type of transfer. Ionic compounds are typically crystalline and very, very structured. Um, if you look at the um, diagram here, the sodium chloride um, lattice structure, you'll notice that you have a repeating set um, of ions. You have chlor chloride, sodium, chloride, sodium, okay, and this continues all the way down through and across the solid. Okay, so this repeating uh, structure, or this repeating lattice, um, is what we come to expect or anticipate with ionic sol solids. Um, in that same con uh, thought process, uh, they also are very brittle and have high melting points. Um, the reason why they're very brittle is because any disturbance in the interactions between the ions in the lattice um, lead to repulsive forces. So if I were to take a hammer and, and hit the 
um, row of atoms right here um, and basically shifted each one of these atoms down by one, uh, what you would end up with is negatively charged ions being in close proximity and subsequently um, repelling one another. So whenever the structures of these ionic solids are disturbed, um, you end up with a crumbling or basically a disintegration type um, result because of those interactions. Now, the high melting point is due to the high lattice energy because of the um, overlapping and uh, sequential organization of the uh, interactions between the sodium and chloride ions, or the positively and negatively charged ions. And we'll talk more about this um, feature here in a second. So we've just discussed the fact that ionic solids have very high melting points, and we need to talk about some of the driving forces behind uh, the need to add a lot of energy to be able to separate out um, the ions that are inside an ionic solid. Um, and that brings us to discussing the lattice energy. And lattice energy, guys, is the energy that's required to completely separate ions that are um, possessed by an ionic compound, um, so as we see um, here, into their gaseous ionic state. Okay, So in order to get this process to happen, we must add um, quite a bit of energy, as we see here. And the energy that we have to add to separate these ions is known as ladder, lattice energy. So um, basically what we need to understand is that the driving force behind uh, the, the value of the lattice energy um, is going to be directly proportional to our charges of our ions and indirectly proportional to the distance between them. And we've seen equations um, that look very similar here when we talk about uh, Coulomb's uh, law. Uh, and in that same sense, uh, the larger the charges of those ions, the higher your lattice energy is going to be. Um, the farther apart those ions are, um, the obviously uh, smaller the lattice energy is going to be. So basically, um, the ability or, or, or the melting point and vaporization points of the ions that are present in our ionic compounds are going to be directly proportional to the charges of the ions contained within as well as the distance between those ions. Okay, so um, the distance between the ion centers is what we will be looking at, um, so uh, the ionic radii. Um, but in all uh, practice problems and stuff that we're going to be doing in this lesson, I'm not actually going to ever make you calculate lattice energy. Uh, the only consideration uh, that I want you to think about with respect to this equation is how changing the charges or changing the differences affect the relative energy. Okay, so something else to think about, guys, is that charge is the biggest factor in uh, calculating or, or, or assessing lattice energies. Um, the distances of ions, although, um, are, although the fact that they actually can be variable is true, the differences in size are usually minimal. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and let's apply this. So they want us to organize uh, these ionic compounds in order of increasing lattice energy. Okay, so when we're looking at this, the first thing we want to consider are the various charges of each of the ions. So we know that our fluorine, or sorry, our sodium is plus one, our fluorine is minus one, um, our cesium is plus one, our uh, iodide is minus one, our calcium is plus two, and our oxygen is minus two. Okay, so based on the statement here that charge is the biggest factor when considering lattice energy, we know that calcium oxide has the largest charges, so we assume that the lattice energy is going to be greatest in that ionic solid. Now, when we go ahead and we consider um, sodium fluoride and cesium iodide, we now need to start talking about sizes. Why? Because the charges are proportional to one another. So if we look at um, cesium iodide on the period, uh, cesium and iodine on the periodic table, they exist on a lower position than the um, sodium and fluoride analogs. So what we can determine is that the larger the ions, right, the greater the distance between their centers. So if we're going to have a bigger distance between our centers, that's going to decrease our lattice energy. So we know that cesium iodide is going to have a lower lattice energy than the sodium fluoride with its smaller ions. Okay, so guys, um, basically if we go ahead and we look at all of these um, examples, we're going to consider the relationships between charges and distance um, to assess our lattice energy, but we're not actually going to cal calculate them. So be sure that you spend time, obviously, looking at this equation um, and getting that relationship down pat.